Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, the general is not telling the full story there. He was appointed, I think, midweek, so we asked him if he would get together, and he said, sure. I said, the only time I got left in the week is Sunday afternoon about 6 o'clock, and he didn't quibble. He showed up in Berlin at 6 o'clock in the evening, and on a Sunday evening we began to discuss the ways that we could help in Washington move the National Guard mission forward. But that wasn't enough. I said, by the way, we've got people at Holloman Air Force Base that you absolutely must meet, and, and we've got to meet them soon, like today. He said, well, I can't go today. And so I suggested a date, and he said, that's the date I'm, I'm being sworn in by the governor. And I said, well, then get sworn in and get on down to Alamogordo. And so he did. He drove all the way from Santa Fe on the same day he was sworn in. With him driving, and then I was caught here in Las Cruces, we actually didn't start our meetings till 8 o'clock. We had two meetings that started at 8 o'clock. So Staff Sergeant Major Martin showed up in the middle of the night. She left here at 9 o'clock to drive into El Paso. So you can imagine by the time she got to Alamogordo, uh, and he had the 6 o'clock flight the next morning. But that's the commitment that I see on the part of the general to see that you all are protected in your missions. And that's what we want out of our leaders, people who work day and night for the people who serve. Now, I did come home from Vietnam to a nation that was disrespecting young people. And I can tell you, I did what every other young person in the military did at that point. I took my uniform off and put it in this closet and never spoke again about service for 25 years because the nation disrespected the uniform that much. Now, when I got to Congress, the first speech I gave on the floor of the House was that maybe others in this body will do it, but I will not let this body be so crass with our soldiers. We're asking them to volunteer. We're asking them to do things that some of us wouldn't do. So I've been to Iraq four times, been to Afghanistan, going back just after the first of the year. But I also wanted to come to the Sinai and say thank you on behalf of a grateful state and a grateful nation. So to you spouses and families, know that I found young men and women who are dedicated, professional, and yes, we wanted them to be safe. But I also explained the mission that when we in Congress talk about the next large world disruption politically and socially, it's going to come from that region. It's going to come from exactly where they were in that border between Israel and Egypt. Now, the day I flew out was a Monday, and that afternoon was the day that the rocket started flying. Know that this is the circumstance that we ask young men and women to go and to just stand between the two parties and say, please, slow down, talk about it. And you see, that's just what happened. I will tell you, the days the rocket started going into Israel were very tense. You all saw it on TV, troops massed, moving toward the border, inflamed rhetoric from both sides. And it's the young men and women in this room that stood between them. Now for you families, you serve also by being here and waiting and taking care of things. And I want to say a special thanks to you because very seldom do we say thanks. But I will tell you the freedom and liberty of this generation depend on every generation finding young men and women who will raise their right hand and swear allegiance to the Constitution, to God, and to the flag. And you all have done that. For your service, God bless you and keep you. When I was going, I went around to southeast New Mexico and we gathered up specific jobs. I didn't want to go and say we got jobs, uh, so we have specific names. Well, the jobs on this sheet are anywhere from 70 to 120,000 a year, so they're not insignificant. Uh, yes, they're over in Southeast Park, Hobbs, Roswell. It's just barely closer than the Sinai. But I just wanted you to know that we do have jobs, every single one of you, and if we don't find some, if the governor doesn't find them, we'll go back to the well and we're going to find you. So we've been passing these out today. Know that, that Major Continoy has, has, yes, Major Continoy has the electronic version. He's already given out the, the paper ones that we bought. But that was the second reason I went to sign off. Thank you very much. All right.